Hello, my name is Xander and welcome back to another tutorial. In this tutorial, we focus on UUID or the Universal Unique Identifier. So let's start off by saying a UUID is a 32 alphanumeric character string. And secondly, it's unique, hence the unique bit. And then thirdly, it can be used to identify things. So in this tutorial, I'll cover a little bit of theory, so the UUID format, to give you an overview of that, and UUID versions, we look at some of the variants and then start to ask ourselves some simple questions. Where can a UUID be utilized? And then I'm going to kind of focus that or draw us down into UUIDs for databases and talk about how we might identify or implement, sorry, a UUID in a database field in this case Django, and then ask the question, why do we need or use UUIDs for primary IDs in a database? And hopefully that will then answer that question. So there are some more interesting aspects of UUID in terms of security, but that's maybe something for a different day, but it'd be well worth if you're interested to learn a little bit more to search in Google for UUID and security and read through that if you're thinking about implementing UUID in your software. So let's just cover the basics again. UUID, Universal Unique Identifier. Now, sometimes you may read through different documentation and it may be referred to a GUID. Now, there are some differences here between a UUID or GUID, but they're so kind of irrelevant that I'm not gonna be talking about them in this tutorial, but go ahead and have a little bit of a read. So as I've previously mentioned, the UUID, this 32, character alphanumeric string is a unique identifier for something in your application. Maybe it's something that you're storing, uh, maybe some sort of artifact, um, or maybe something in your database and you're going to utilize it as an, an ID for uniquely identifying something in your database. There are a number of different variants of UUIDs, but generally you'll probably be working with the variant specified in RFC 4122. So if you go across to the internet and type in RFC 4122, if you're specifically wanting to learn with the kind of uh, Python background, you can go ahead to the Python documentations and read a little bit about how that's been utilized or implemented here in Python. Now, if you want to, and this is a great source of information if you haven't already started reading or didn't know about RFC. Um, go ahead and the top option here, RFC 4122, this is the the original specification uh, and documentation for this UUID, UUID implementation. So here you can start to read what it's for, a little bit of background reading and go into more of the details and how it's actually generated and how it actually works behind the scenes. So if that is something that you need to know, that's well worth having a little read through. Just on a separate point, RFC, request for comments. If you are studying at the moment, for example, and you are studying internet related aspects and you're wanting to write about standards um, or technical developments, you may want to have a look at the RFC database and to see if you can find the original specification. And from there, you'll find some really in-depth information about the different uh, protocols or standards or developments that you're writing about. And it's it's a good reference point. I do find that most of the time the, uh, the RFCs are well written and they're easy to understand, at least maybe, for example, the abstracts and the introductions to get a general understanding. And here you can see, for example, the UUID is 128 bit long and can guarantee uniqueness across space and time. So the whole point of this UUID system is that it can generate unique numbers. So obviously it's not unlimited. There's around about five sep trillion numbers it can produce. Uh, there's around about 24 zeros there. So it's quite a large amount of numbers uh, of randomly generated numbers or alphanumeric uh, IDs it can produce. Okay, so I'll say it can produce. So UUID, it can be found in the Python standard library. So we can import this into our project if we're running Python. And no doubt if you're running any other programming language, it can also be utilized. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to imp import even. We're going to import UUID. So let's go ahead and do that. And just to kind of show a simple implementation, let's print out and let's generate a new UUID. So we say UUID, let's extend from there and then define the version that we want to use. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So here, just version one, 
and then let's just go ahead and print this out so uh from so python and then example.py and you can see that we've generated a uuid so we can look closely at the uuid and notice a few different characteristics so the uuid is represented as 32 hexadecimal digits it's separated by hyphens uh, into five groups. So we have a group here of eight, four, 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 and then 12. So we have a total of 32 alphanumeric characters and four hyphens. So what you're gonna find here is I've mentioned, or so I've identified M and N. So these two characters here, M referring to the one and the N here referring to the A, uh, so that highlights uh, two different characteristics about the UUID. So the M is indicating the UUID version. So this version here is using version one. And the N, this um, is a digit that indicates the UUID variant. So here you can see the variant is uh, defined here as A, and that means that we're using a variant uh, one as specified like we saw in the RFC 4122. So let's just go through the different versions that are available in Python. Right, so we've already seen UUID 1, but let's just do this one more time. So print UUID uh, dot UUID 1. So that's going to generate a UUID version 1. So this will generate a UUID based upon the host ID and the current time, and of course, time is completely unique so that then makes or helps formulate a very unique id so let's go ahead and do that and you can see we've generated an id now let's just turn this into a put that into a variable and let's move on to version three so there is no version two in python so let's go ahead to version three so let's go ahead and print uh, uuid dot uuid three okay so this is going to take two arguments here so UUID3, um, this is made up by using an MD5 hash of a namespace, UUID, so would essentially a UUID, and a name. So let's import or bring in the name, sorry, the, the, the UUID1, the UUID that we've generated um, and storing in X, and then just a name. And from that, we can then create a new unique UUID. So go ahead and do that, and there we go. So. And next up, we have UUID 4. So this is a, a random UUID that's uh, generated. So you can have a look at the UUID specification uh, in order to work out how that is actually done. So we can generate a random ID. Now, if you're using, for example, Django, you'll see that this is the default implementation, I think. So there we go. So we've created a unique identifier. So there's something like one in a billion chance that you'll create a, a number, a non-unique number. I think it's something like that. And then finally, we have UUID 5. So this generates a UUID based on the, uh, the SHA-1 hash of a namespace, identifier, and a name. So again, we can bring in our UUID and then some sort of name. So we'll just call it name, and then that would generate another UUID. So the whole point of this is obviously to keep continually creating a unique um, ID. So just to summarize the different variants, this doesn't have any super importance because generally you're going to be utilizing variant one specified in RFC 4122. But you can see there are four different variants here, zero reserved for backward compatibility, uh, one, the one that was specified in RFC 4122, two reserved for Microsoft and three reserved for future definition. So let's move into UUID usage. So hopefully at this point you've got the general idea the usage of this is anywhere that needs something that's uniquely identified, for example, in a system. Now, depending on what type of development you're doing, maybe like I think I gave an example before, if you're developing a game, you can have lots of assets. Now, 
as soon as you start needing to name something and there's quite a lot of them talking into the thousands it can be very hard to potentially generate a naming schema that will support that scale and to have that foresight to begin with to know that you'll need to scale it at that much um, that's always annoying too where you think you're only going to have a thousand for example so you develop a naming scheme for that and then you realize you have a hundred thousand so your naming scheming your name scheme gets uh, complicated very quickly potentially um, so anything that needs a unique identifier this is where we can start to use a UUID now in addition to that it's worth probably saying that this is just a tool that we can utilize we could build our own um, way of generating numbers unique IDs of course but this is just a convenient way of doing that and there are different ways of doing it of course UUID is just one method for us to generate IDs so something I wanted to finish on was to explore UUIDs in a database. So we could use a UUID for storing something um, in a database that can be uniquely identified. So we could utilize or connect a UUID to a, a row in a table. Each row would have a unique identifier. Of course, if you're familiar to databases, you already know potentially that a database table would have a primary key and that would be unique. So this is just one other way we could create a, that unique ID for a table. Leading down the path of utilizing UUIDs for primary keys in a table, this is just an extract from a Django model. So here we have the default ID set up. Now, typically in Django, we don't need to define the primary key. That just happens behind the scene. And you can see here that the default um, field is a big auto field and primary key is set to true. So we can convert our tables manually. We can define our own primary key in Django. So we can just change this. So what we need to do here is, uh, we're just pretending this is in the Django models. We need to import UUID and that way that allows us to kind of specify the default UUID that we want to use. And we know that there's a few different types that we can utilize. So that's something that we can potentially change. So now, for example, we just need to specify. Now here we're working with, um, presuming we're working with a Postgres database. So UUID and then field. So UUID field. So if you wanted to utilize a UUID field, definitely check out the specifications of the database that you're using because there may be different um, attributes that need to be set um, or there may be different ways to work with a UUID field. So it's well worth checking that out before you start utilizing a UUID field in your application. Right, so now we've got that in place, we can now go ahead, for example, and utilize this UUID import to set the default um, variant, so, or version, UUID, and dot UUID four, for example. So hopefully at this point, you already know what's gonna happen when we generate a new item or a new row. This ID is going to generate a unique ID. Now, if you remember UUID four, that was the generator random UUID. So you can see here, um, it tells us that if I hover over. So that's gonna give me a, a unique random UUID. And as I alluded to, there's statistics that just suggest that there's like a one in a billion chance that you'll get the same number generated. So let's get down to the last question. Why should I use a UUID as a primary key in my table? Well, let's think of it this way. Imagine we have a product table, ID, which is a, a, a unique number. Um, let's just use the default setup, which would be an auto incrementing number starting from one. So every time we add a new row into our database, or our table, sorry, the ID is gonna be auto incremented. So the first item we enter into this table will be ID one, name, whatever the name is, then ID two, and then ID three and so on for the different rows. So now, for example, we have our old database here, um, our old table in our database product. We have the auto incremented ID and the name. And now what we want to do, we've acquired another database where we want to migrate all the data from that database over to our old database. So the problem we got here is that they both have a products table, which is great. And they've got unique um, IDs, but the problem is both tables are using auto incremented numbers. So for example, there is a, a row in this product table here, um, for example, ID one name, whatever it is. And there's also ID one here 
and a name and they're different products and we want to merge these tables. So the problem I've got now is that I need to update the ID on one of these tables in order to integrate these new products into my table because both of these IDs that we're using in each table, they're not unique to um, each other because the ID we're just using or the default auto incremented numbers. So our tables might hold something like this. So ID one name Apple and on this table, uh, that we want to merge into our original table ID one name pair. And of course we've got a clash here with this primary key from both tables in that is now not unique if we were going to merge these tables together. So you may have already identified if we had user UUID for both tables, then what will happen is that this U, this ID would typically be unique or there'd be more chance of it being unique. So if we wanted to merge these tables across, we wouldn't have problems. So you might be asking yourself, well, it's not such a big deal because I just need to change the IDs. So wherever this ends up on this product, so maybe we've got a thousand products. So the next number, a thousand and one, we just use it for this table that we're merging in. So the only problem with that is that this table might be connected to 10 other tables or might be dependent on 10 other tables. And of course that ID is going to be critical to collect um, or to be utilized for those relationships on those other tables. So it can cause quite a lot of work to kind of get everything to be merged together. So I'm not telling you to go ahead now and make tables with UUIDs as primary IDs, but it's something to consider when you're developing your table. Now, one reason why you might not want to start using UUIDs in your tables is because you start to read through and then you find that there's potentially performance issues with UUIDs. Now, the more you read about UUID performance, the more you'll find about not to use UUIDs. And then also the same amount of information you'll find as the reason to use it. And you'll find some people have a wonderful experience using UUIDs for their um, unique ID for their tables and some that suggest um, there's some performance overhead. So that's something that you need to look more into at the start of your development um, when you're developing your database and to think about performance and um, potentially to perform some testings. It obviously depends on the scale of your application, uh, the type of resources that you have available and so on. Of course, there's absolutely no reason why you can't use a UUID if you have the time and resource uh, to really consider when and how to utilize it and how to set it up correctly. So that's hopefully started your journey into what is a UUID and starting to utilize UUIDs within your applications. Of course, I only gave you one example there. There are plenty of other examples where you might want to generate UUIDs for resources that you want to uniquely identify in your software. Um, and that can be resources found in a database or other kind of resources. Uh, for example, if you're saving files through your system, you may want to generate a UUID for that image, for example, or for that resource. So thank you very much for listening. I do hope that was useful. And I hope to see you in the next tutorial.